So, as we have in the last few weeks, we begin today with the scripture that has shaped this sermon series and gives it its name. From Luke 6, verses 31 through 36. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners led to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. So today's sermon on respect is something I frankly struggled with. Maybe because that's how it's changed in my lifetime. Now, as a child, I was taught to respect adults. And that meant I was polite to them. I didn't question them, at least certainly not to their face. That I was quiet in their presence, because, you know, children should be seen and not heard. I called them Mr. Smith and Mrs. Jones. Never by their first names. And then Aretha Franklin came along and sang that about respect in that song, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Now I looked at the lyrics again as I prepared for this sermon and it really came home to me what she was saying. It's a song about a woman who is working hard and who comes home to a man who takes all she's earned and uses her abuses her, ignores her. And all she's asking, she says, is for a little respect. That's not just about being polite or calling some people Mr. Jones. She's tapping into the true meaning of respect. The word comes from Latin respectus, and it means the act of looking at one often to consider, to observe. And that's what Aretha is asking for in that song. She's saying, see me, consider me, and my feelings. I think that's what young people mean when they say they want respect and why they feel dissed, which is short for disrespect. They want to be seen, considered, Heard. That was the cornerstone of the Braver Angels workshop we hosted on September 21st. The exercises were about listening to people with whom we disagreed and to let them know that we see them, we hear them. And then it was reaching out to find some common ground, all while considering them and their opinions. And isn't that what we all want? To be seen and heard and considered. When we do that, we do to others as we want others to do to us. Now the early church faced the same struggles that we do. And Paul has to address it in his first letter to the Corinthians. From 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 26. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were with pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 
To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we all were all made to drink of one Spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the ear were to say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, the Corinthians knew that they had some troubles in their church, some disagreements in the congregation. They have written to Paul for help in resolving them. But this is not one of their questions. Rather, this is what has been reported to Paul. This is how one pastor describes the situation in Corinth. The church in Corinth was full of schisms and divisions. This division was seen in the socioeconomic status between different members. It was seen in the difference between the wealthy and poor at the communion table. Members of this congregation were even taking other members to court. Move to love, especially when it is inconvenient and difficult. Teach us today what it means to love one another as you who have loved us. Amen. Amen.